Alhamdulillah, it's good to be in the masjid tonight with the believers. Inshallah. I can only sort of dovetail uh, what was already said. So much wisdom, so much beauty was uh, communicated. You know, one of the uh, one of the names of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, according to our perennial teachers, is the perfect man, right? And insan and kamil. Perfect man. And our scholars explain this by saying that essentially he is a reflection of the divine names and attributes at the level of creation that is perfect. And if you look at anyone else in history, nobody comes close to him. Just look at his life. I mean, I mention this all the time, but it's mind boggling to me how people don't see this. You know, a father, a husband, a military general, a legislator, a prophet, a mystic, was on and on and on. Nobody in history was like this, right? The perfect reflection of the divine names and attributes. And in the Quran, we're told that one of the central messages of our master, Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, is to communicate to his people this type of mystical teaching. It's paraphrased in the Quranic uh, statement, Kunu Rabbaniyin. Right? This, this verse, this statement in the Quran is in the context of Isa alayhi salam. That be lordly, be reflections of the divine. Right? Tahallaku bi akhlaqillah. There's a hadith like this, some say the weakness in the hadith. You know, maybe there's some weakness in the hadith, but the ulama say this is absolutely true. Adorn yourself with the character of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the perfect human being par excellence. Every prophet is a perfect human being, right? And many of the saints, men and women, but no one has it so perfect at a perfect equilibrium as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his actions are a reflection of the character, if you will, of his Lord. And if we look at his life, he was the epitome of forgiveness, right? His forgiveness is something literally supernatural. We're not describing anything divine to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the best of creation. Supernatural, I mean, it's something that is just something beyond our frames of reference, that he can forgive someone who cannibalized his uncle, who was also his, almost like his brother. That he could forgive this person, you know. He didn't turn them away. He didn't say, no, 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 we don't need your shahada. We don't need your shahada. We're okay. That's unbelievable. And Sidi Abdul Rashid reminded me of a story that the Prophet Sallallahu one time, he pointed to a man and he said, this is the man of Jannah, right? And said, Umar, you know, the Sahaba in general, they would take obviously the statements of the Prophet said them very, very seriously, right? And so when the Bedouin would come and ask him questions, they had mixed feelings about that because the Bedouin were a little gruff, but they would ask good questions. So the Sahaba would listen, but they have to sort of, you know, make sure that he doesn't breach adab, things like that. So anyway, Sayyidina Umar, he heard the Prophet say, this man is a man of Jannah. So Sayyidina Umar said, oh. So he started following this man around a little bit, right? What's, what's, Looks like a normal guy, you know. <laughs> Where's he going now? I think he's going to go pray Salat al Duha or something. He's, he's going to pray some Nafi lads. Hmm. Average guy. <laughs> every day, Joe, every day, uh, every day, uh, Ahmed, you know, walking around. So the Sayyidina Umar said, I have to ask him. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say this about you. You're a man of Jannah in the man of Sukhra. Me? Yes. What are you? What are you doing? <laughs> why did he say that? Can you can you tell me why? Maybe he said that. So, he said, well, there's there's one thing. Before I go to bed at night, I make sure I don't hold any rancor in my heart for any Muslim. I have no enmity, no ghil in my heart for any Muslim. Right? He's a man of Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu like I said, he is the personification of forgiveness. And the month of Ramadan is a month in which 
we should really try to transform ourselves and, uh, and uh, imbibe these divine attributes during the month. It's not a burden, it's a guest. This is traditionally how Muslims would welcome Ramadan. You know, Sidi Abdul Rashid touched on this too. That if you feel a, a bit of, ah, Ramadan, seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Marhaban, take advantage of it. Enjoy your Ramadan. Enjoy it. You don't have to worry about your breakfast, your coffee. You don't have to worry about it. You know, you can take a break from going to the gym. You know, you want to get, you know, want to feel the pump three, four times a week. You can still do that. You got to take it easy a little bit. That's good. Take a break. Your body needs a break. You know, but use the nights to work on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has 99 names. The names are infinite in reality. His names are infinite. Right? But he's revealed, he's chosen these names to reveal to us. One of his names is Malik. Al Malik, the king. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king of everything. He's the king of Al Alameen. Al Alameen means Kullu Masi wa Allah. Everything is of Allah. So Ibn Ajiba says in his commentary, the 99 names, that even this name, all of the names, there's a ta'alluq, there's a, uh, Takhalluk, and there's a tahakkuk. Every name with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ta'alluk means some sort of connection or association we have to this name. Right? And I mentioned this before, but it's worth reiterating. Reminders, benefits to believers. Maybe it's the third or fourth or fifth or tenth time that something will click. You'll have a fatah, inshallah ta'ala. What is our association, our ta'alluk, with the name Malik, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? is simply an admission that he is the king and we are the servant. That's it. You'll be surprised how many people don't want to admit this. <laughs> they think they're the king. Right? This is a God complex. Everybody worships something. There's no such thing as atheism in reality. The Quran doesn't entertain this idea, I'm an atheist. Everybody worships something. And the most common form of idolatry is worship of the nafs, of the hawa. Have you seen the one who takes as his Lord, his God, his hawa? He worships his own nafs. Right? So instead of waking up, oh, I'm going to miss Fajr. Let me make wudu. I got 10 minutes. Like me this morning. Literally this morning. Oh, I'll go. Start praying. Oh, looking out the window. Oh, there's the sun out. No sun. Oh, inshallah. Afraid to look at my Muslim Pro app, see if I'm gonna pray. People wake up, oh, oh, my phone, my phone. Who likes my comments? Pathetic. As you said, Sidi Muhammad, as he said, it's pathetic. Who likes my comments? Who commented? Who's praising me? SubhanAllah. Who's praising me? Oh no, this person didn't like me. Oh, they're gonna cancel me. They're gonna cancel me. That's fine. What our concern should be. Is Allah going to cancel us? This is our concern. You know who Allah canceled? Abu Lahab. Tabbat yada abi Lahabin. Watab. You see this? Watab at the end? He's canceled. He's done. And this is in Mecca. Abu Lahab, he was a smart man. Don't you we? He could have said, oh, he's canceling me. La ilaha illallah. What do you say now? No. He's done. Who's in control of everything? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has putra, who has ilm mutlaq, who has in his yad the amr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our concern should be pleasing our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be our only concern. Don't worry about what people think about you. you know, this is difficult to do, especially nowadays, because it's, it's a culture of just worshipping the nafs. I mean, I... I don't know how young people deal with these things. Maybe during Ramadan, just get off all social media. I, I was on Facebook for about a year, until 2017. And, you know, I was a grown man at the time, in my early 20s, <laughs> give or take. And even I was like, something, I, this, is, this is not beneficial for me. Maybe you can handle it, I couldn't handle it. Just take a break during Ramadan. Read the Quran. Engage with the Kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ulama say, you can gauge 
how you really feel about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say, oh, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, this, is, this is difficult. You have to be honest with yourself. How do you feel about the Quran? Do you read the Quran? Do you, do you read it in English? Okay. Do you read a tafsir? Are you trying to learn Arabic? The Quran's in Arabic. English is not Quran. This is a translation. As one of my teachers said, never say the Quran says God is one. Is it, oh, what? Are you sure about that? <laughs> yes. He said, when you say that, say, some of the meanings of the Quran may suggest God is one. The Quran says, Qul Allah Ahad. It's to be technical. But it's still permissible to say the Quran says God is one. But you know you're not speaking in reality. So gauge your, your relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you feel about the ulama? How do you feel about them? Oh, these ulama, these patriarchal, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, you know, antiquated, blah, 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 blah. What do they know? You know? SubhanAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْرِبُ الْعُلَمَةِ فَإِنَّهُ مَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَةِ Honor the scholars. For they are the inheritors of the prophets. There's no more anbiya. We have ulama. Yeah, and the, the Prophet وسلم, he warned us towards the end of time there's going to be ulama usuk. There's going to be evil scholars. Yes, that's true. But we have good opinions of people. And people who have ijazat and decades and decades of scholarship from, from recognized ulama who have sent it back to the Prophet Sallallahu We should have a good opinion of these people. Our opinion of the ulama is indicative of our opinion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because this is the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and these are the inheritors of Allah's deen. How do we feel about Ahl al-Bayt? How do we feel about the believers in general? These are our allies. Allah says, your only ally, and he uses a singular, is we're united. Your only wali is Allah, his messenger, and the believers. And if other people want to sort of join hands with us for a certain cause, that's fine. But we have hudud. There's khilaf in the religion, and many things are difference of opinion. But if someone is telling you to do something that is haram, that, that is haram, that is ma'lum in ad-deen al-turura, yani that is axiomatically known by clear nusus in the Qur'an, that's muhkam and wadi' and telling you to do this or support this, you can't do that. This kufur. Stand by your deen. Have istiqama. You know? Fastaqim kama umirt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Qur'an, very powerful statement. The Prophet said, my hair turned gray because of this, this statement. Fastaqim kama umirt. Have istiqama, be upright. He told one of his companions, say, I believe in Allah and be steadfast upon that. So we have an admission that Allah is our medic. This is called the ta'alluq. And then we have takhalluq, which means to ornament ourselves. So how do we ornament ourselves with respect to this name, the king? Allah is the king. Well, we also have subjects, right? We have limbs, we have hands, we have a stomach, we have private parts, we have eyes, we have a tongue. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you can guarantee for me the proper usage of what is between your cheeks, your tongue, and what is between your thighs, I guarantee for you Jannah. We have to protect the heart. The heart is the king. Right? As Imam al-Ghazali said, the heart is the king, and there's going to be enemies that will come and surround the castle. And you let them in with your hands, with your eyes, with your tongue. We have to do battle, as the brother said. Sidi Muhammad, he said, this is, this is spiritual warfare. We battle, our battle is not with flesh and blood. Sometimes it is. Our battle is with flesh and blood. It's not with flesh and blood, with principalities of darkness. I hate to quote Paul, but Paul got this one right. <laughs> in Ephesians, actually pseudo Paul. Ephesians is not actually written by Paul. Somebody pretending to be Paul, some forger, but he was wise. This is true. So we have this and then we have which means we've actually 
We've actualized, we've realized the goal, and we've mastered the self. And we put the crown on our head, as it were. We are the king of our bodies. I've protected the heart successfully. But this is a lifelong process. It's like some people read the Quran, I made khatam, okay. Put over your khadafas. Goodbye. Goodbye, Quran. It's collecting dust until next Ramadan. Maybe I'll read it again. And then you're looking at your phone. Oh, I got a text. What do you, what do you know? Okay, I'll come back in five minutes. No, we have to be in the struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last thing I'll say, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يُضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Indeed, we know that what they say causes a, a, a constrictness to, to your heart. It's hurting your heart, what they're saying. You can imagine what they're saying. They canceled the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They threw him in the desert with the Sahaba for three years. The entire ministry of Isa alayhi wa was three years. No disrespect to Isa alayhi wa We love Isa alayhi wa He's our Prophet. We have a greater right to Isa alayhi wa than the Christians. For three years, the Prophet was living in death. No one would marry for the Bani Hashim. No one would uh, trade with them. He, they canceled him. He's put some pressure on him. He'll buckle. No, he's not going to buckle. He has istifama. So we know that they're, what they're saying causes a type of constrictness to your heart. Fasabbih bihamdi rabbik wa kun wa kun min as Glorify the praises of your Lord and be of those who make such death. This is the response. They're insulting you, they're saying this, it's hurting your heart. Praise your Lord. Keep praising God. This is a good sign. The Sahaba were very nervous in times of prosperity. They were nervous in times of prosperity. Did, has Allah forsaken us? He's just giving us the dunya now? What happened to the, what happened to the tribulations? In times of tribulations, okay, Allah's purifying us. Allah's purifying us. And worship your Lord until Al Yaqeen comes to you. And Al Yaqeen here, according to almost all of the exegetes, it means Al Mot. It means death. You worship Allah until you die. This is our life in the dunya. This is our life. We want to go out with the Shahada. So we ask for Istiqama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Istiqama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us husn al khatima, a good ending. Never be complacent with your state. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wear the na'anain of khawf and raja, wear the two sandals of fear and hope. Don't be so fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you say, how can Allah forgive me? I've done this and that. How can Allah forgive you? Astaghfirullah. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Never, ever, ever despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's haram to be in a state of despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave us a hadith. It's such a hyperbolic example. He said there was a mass murder. He killed a hundred people. Allah forgave him. Allah accepted his tawbah. But never be so much hopeful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you start becoming complacent. You start missing prayer. You start saying, yeah, hey, I've been fasting. I got a business lunch. My brother told me one time, I got, I got hired by a firm. I'm not going to fast. He didn't ask me, like, should I fast? He said, I'm not going to fast. He said, oh, you're not going to fast. Okay. Not a good idea. Have istifama in the religion. Don't worry about what people think. No one's opinion matters at the end of the day. Nobody's opinion. And if people cancel you, well, that's fine. Take it as an, as, as an honor. It's, it's, a, it's a badge of honor that you've been canceled by people of the dunya, people who are materialists, people who believe in the ruh, people who believe in essences. People who say the only matter that matters is matter. People who think they can get surgeries and change their gender because there's no such thing as an essence. This is a real world view? These people are canceling you? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never cancel you. He'll never cancel you as long as you keep turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you come with a mountain of sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, I will come with a mountain of forgiveness. A man came after... After Salat al-Asr, he came to the Prophet sallallahu and said, Ya, ya, ya Rasulullah, I have sinned against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So punish me according to the book of Allah. He said, according to the book of Allah. He did something major. Right? Some, sometimes they say, he, he like, you know, did something, he like, you know, something minor. He punished me according to the book of Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu he said, 
هل حضرت معنا الصلاة؟ هل حضرت معنا الصلاة؟ Didn't you just pray with us? إلا نعم قد غفر لك It's been forgiven Go As they say, go and sin no more Right? Although that's the Gospel of John, that's also not authentic by the way <laughs> But we have something that's authentic in our tradition اللهم اهدي قومي Another thing that's inauthentic in the Bible, Jesus praying for the Jews on the cross, Father, give, forgive them, they know not what they do. Everybody believes that's a fabrication. Ask any New Testament scholar. But we have a tradition in our tradition. On, on the day of Uhud, there's blood streaming down the face of the Prophet ﷺ, and he's catching his blood in his hands, and he's absorbing his blood like this. And the Sahaba are saying, Ya Rasulullah, what is this? And he said, if one drop of this blood should strike the earth immediately, the angels will exterminate this Quraysh. And they said, huh? Let it flow. Allahumma ahdi qawmi, innahum la ya'lamu. Oh God, guide my people, for they don't know. Look at the supernatural forgiveness. Hind bint Utbah becomes Muslim. Wahshi becomes Muslim. Amr ibn al-As becomes Muslim. Uh, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb becomes Muslim. Uh, Ikrama uh, ibn Abi Jahal, the son of Abu Jahal. Abu Jahal, the worst of Fir'aun. The Prophet وسلم, he said on the day of Fatha Mecca, he said, Ikrama, the son of Abu Jahal, is coming to me now. Do not revile his father. He's going to become our brother. Right. Look at this forgiveness. This is unbelievable. I've, I've spoken too much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us istifama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers and fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our taqwa of him, our mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to, to, uh, to mirror his names and attributes in the manner in which the best of creations of Allah alayhi wa did so. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammadin wa alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.